<laughs> what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> I do not look like that. <laughs> Please don't take it. It's on. Oh, yeah, it's on now. A traveling ancient priest, the story goes, met an old man walking along the road and asked him how to get to Mount Olympus. The old man, who turned out to be Socrates, replied, Just make sure that every step you take is in that direction. The Republic of Ireland challenges us all to remember the story's lesson. Decide what you want to see happen in committee and make it happen. Don't argue for the sake of arguing. Ireland has a goal. Argue for action, argue for truth. Socrates knows we accomplish goals step by step. In committee, Ireland as a nation will be setting standards that not only we can follow, but other nations can follow as well. Goals should be reasonable and they should be accomplishable. You may have to start small, but it is better to start small and reach that goal than to start big and fall short of accomplishment. Furthermore, when we set goals, we should keep in mind the programs and committees that are already in existence. Creating a new committee for every problem will not solve that problem. As a result of the September 11 attacks, the Dublin airport security has increased Instead of creating more procedures that could lead to more confusion, we have refined, refined, refined our existing procedures. The answer is not always to create more committees. We have what it takes. Use the already we have. It will work. We have the tools to solve it ourselves. Mr. Secretary General, you have given us your confidence to solve this problem. Ireland accepts that challenge. Let us take action now. I've identified how we argue for action. Now how do we argue for truth? Ireland strongly believes that human rights are the rights that matter most. These are the rights that cannot be compromised. In our eyes, human rights are held in the highest regard and should be treated as such. There is no higher ideal than human rights. Do you know the only thing that human rights violators are afraid of? is the truth. If they really believed that they were doing was right, they would not cover it up. Argue for truth, delegates. Finally, we need to create the desire for countries to do right. The rewarding of good action will bring more efforts to do good. The Committee Ireland will be encouraging authors of resolutions to include a policy with positive reinforcement. Steps such as Canada's $18.2 million debt forgiveness to Ghana for earning a democratic election is an example of positive reinforcement. People should not be scared into doing something right. They should want to do it. And with that want, so much more can be accomplished. So as we move into the committee today, I ask you to think, what is the way to model it?
to the speaker. Do you yield? Uh, how would you go about making the, the government uh, legitimate? Well, there is no way for us to make the government legitimate, but we would try to make positive reinforcements. So if there are governments that we see as legitimate, we could help them out in some way, possibly economically. Uh, because we don't believe in negative reinforcements such as sanctions that really hurts countries. Good evening, fellow delegates. It is unfortunate that we started out by disagreeing on almost every parliamentary procedure that we wanted to introduce. Well, let this not be an omen for our uh, for the future goals. Now, in West Africa, I'm sure that everybody already knows many problems at play, ranging from everything from ethnic cleansing to petty thievery and border disputes, like has already been mentioned. However, the topic is called political instability in West Africa. But we have to remember that political instability, it's, well, in our focus paper, it was called the cold term. As we have to remember that politics affects the people. They affect the people that live in their countries. Now, I mean, there are two ways to look at every, every situation. Actually, not two ways, many more than that. I mean, we can look at the politics and blame nations, groups, organizations. Or perhaps we can look at the human rights. I mean, gross violations which have been occurred in these areas over the past decades. And yet, we've seen the UN be mediocre in trying to accomplish these goals. But I just hope that all of us gets to keep in mind all, all the humans, and not just mere numbers. Let's get those approaches. Thank you, Delegate. Let's talk about and hydro. Um, Let's also talk about some discontented or shaking. Yeah, I mean, remember the field is an incredible challenge. We just ran really with like some yeah. guidelines that we like made up for some reason. Like, you pick another country and do it. It's going to make For example, the United States has has put sanctions on Iraq and it has only really affected the government, not the people. And so what we want to do is we want say we want to send the UN to inspect and to make sure that the water is being used correctly and so that it's not being used to irrigate drugs like the opium or, or along that line. And um, if, if they are, we don't want to sanction water from them. What we want to do is we want to deliver water directly to the people and make sure it's going to the correct use, not for these irrigation and we don't want to make we want to make sure it's not going to terrorist groups. Um, that's what our re our working paper really states. We hope in the next few hours to turn it into a resolution. Uh, all these ideas that we've all brought up in the past day to uh, for programs and, and training and things to uh, curb police brutality and torture, we didn't talk about funding. Uh, we, we've all, um, many of us have spoken on uh, who needs money and who can donate money, but I, I think that we should talk about how we'll disperse this money. Um, there's obviously many uh, 
body would be the one to conduct, you know, the investigations to make sure that money is going to what countries want to be sure. What I might
thank you, India, for your words. Djibouti feels that this resolution is well done and will benefit everyone. Many things were addressed, including cultural sensitive education so people are not turned away from their culture. There's much education involved, and we have, we have, excuse me, um, the council, we believe in counseling for the orphans in this resolution because they will, they're not necessarily going to be quite the same as everyone else due to their past experiences. Um, and there's much education for orphans to give them skills that they will need later in life. And for funding, there's um, private organizations will fund along with others. And for the orphanages to keep them up, the old orphanages will be kept up by different standards. And then there's new orphanages that will be made. And this resolution believes for open borders, that way if a country cannot handle their orphan problems, that if they were of a certain age, they could travel over to another country where they could help take care of them. And there was um, inspections for the orphanages so that they could make sure that they were up to par. And there was, we tried, we tried to stop discrimination by making the orphans of HIV uh, no different than any other orphans. Thank you. Yeah. In other words, we'll give you water, you give us oil. And I feel like giving this list to 